Okay. So on the last session we discussed one of the uh, interview question. So did you get any idea how can we do that? The question is uh, clear, right? Okay, Raj and Nobody? Uh, yeah, I get, but I tried, but I didn't get any idea on this. Okay, and you, Ravali? No, I get, I don't know either. Okay, okay, fine. So, the question was, uh, once again, I will repeat the question. So we got the requirement, one of the requirements. So we have worked on that and a couple of times we have checked into the EME, development EME, and then we have moved that code to the testing environment. So before completion of this testing on this object for the requirement, whatever we have posted, it, we got a new requirement on top of that and we have worked and checked in a couple of times as well in the development EME. So uh, whatever the latest version we have sent it to the testing environment on top of that we have couple of versions also. So now the issue was like whenever they do the testing the it got failed. There will be a code issue let's say in the testing environment. So we have to work on the version which we have sent it to the testing environment because they don't accept the new requirement also on top of this. So how can we do how can we work on that version. So the solution could be like whenever we have sent the code, the code will migrate from one environment to the other environment using tags in Abinitio. So we create a tag, it's called tags. So we create the tags and put all the objects, whatever we require it. All the objects you place it in one of the file and create a tag and that tag you give it to the another team that's called as a release team they will migrate the code from one environment to the other environment so you will be knowing which tag you have deployed into the testing environment so on top of the tag they were doing this testing so the code got failed so just identify the tag which got failed so you will be knowing which object they ran it and got failed so you can easily identify the project and based on the project you can identify the tag name so in such a case the tag name will be the same in the development environment also so come to the development environment and check out the tag instead of check out checking out the objects from the EMA we can do a checkout from the tag as well so the checkout command will be like a project export so as we seen like a project import project path base dir sandbox path hyphen file file names like that similarly that is for importing or a checking in similarly we have a project export for checkout command so in such a case now we have to check out from the tag a project export project port similarly half from base DIO and sandbox port where you want to check out and from where you want to check out and which file so half and file and the file name or the object name here I want to check out one of the graph names. So give it the name of the graph. Then from where you have to check out. Now you have to check out from the tag. Hyphen from hyphen tag is a command and give the tag name. So this is the command what you have to execute it so that 
whatever the tag you have pointed out in the testing environment that was failed you can do a checkout from this tag into this fan box path whatever you have specified of this graph so now you have the object with you can you tell me now what steps you will follow because this concept i have not covered and expecting from you is a bit uh, higher so now you have the object with you you have checked out and you have the object so what steps you will follow Bagrash and Ravi. Yeah, I got. Um. Uh, we got. Maybe we can do the modifications on this on this object, and we have to check in with the same tag name again. Mm, can you tell me one second? No, no. We have. Uh, I mean, uh, we have check out this object project. Okay, so uh, whatever the graph we require. Okay. okay. We have done modifications on that, and again we need to we need to check in the same graph. So again, maybe we need to uh, check in with the same tag name. Okay, okay. that concept I will cover. But uh, the first thing what you said is like <coughs> we want to do the modifications on the, of this graph, right? Once you checked out, that is what uh, that is what right? You mean you have to do the modifications? Yeah. Whatever you have checked out, right? So, yeah. to do the modifications, what we have to do? First, we have to apply a lock, so that we are making sure that none of the other persons yeah. are making a lock on the same object, because the lock will be applied on the repository, not on the sandbox, right? Yes, sir. So, can we do this? For that, I think there should be some command like here lock. Yeah, command will be there. But can you able to lock it? This object, whatever you have checked out using a project export from the tag. Okay. Because this is like, let's say, uh, as I said, this will be the third version. But on top of this, already we have few more versions in the development EME. So what? Uh, once you checked out this object in the sandbox, so what is the an, um, error it, or the information it will give? Out of date with EME, right? Yeah. So in such a case, I cannot apply a log. Okay. So now you have the object version. What you wanted to make the change, but you cannot able to apply the log. But you can apply the lock on the latest version, but the testing people is not expected the changes whatever you have done on the latest version. On top of that, they are not expecting the code to be fixed. Right? Yeah. So what steps you will take place? Uh, I can make it is uh, make this one as a latest version, and I will apply lock and I will do changes. Uh -huh. I will export and then I will make it as a previous. No, no, no. How you will make it this as a latest version? Again, you to make it latest version, you have to check in. To check in, you have to apply the lock, but you cannot apply the lock. So what we can do is, you have the uh, third version, which version you have sent it to the UAT or any of the testing environment and similarly you have the latest version in one of the sandbox, which was latest in the development EME. So always only on the latest version you can able to apply the lock, otherwise it will show with out of date with EME. In such a case. You apply the lock on the latest object and what you can do is from the back end you just do a CP command. 
so after you applying the lock let's say you are just modifying one of the component in the group or you are writing some extra line in the transformation or you are changing one of the dml or some modification you are doing it it's a minor change still it will take consideration as the graph has been updated so in such a case if you are overwriting the total graph with the older version also it will treat as a change so you have already two versions one with the older version what the testing team is expecting and one with the newer version so once you apply the lock on the latest version from the back end you can do scp with the older version to the newer version so the complete graph gets overwritten with the older one and the lock will also be applied this is one way of doing it and the other way is once you apply the lock it's called as a force checkout the older versions if whenever you wanted to do a checkout with force iphone force option we can do a checkout so you apply the lock on the latest version and you can similarly you can check out the only thing is here you can write hyphen force hyphen force hyphen files under the graph name from the jack so and the sandbox path should be same whatever the path you have been logged the graph already so that it will get overwritten so both the ways it is same both the ways uh, from uh, first thing is using cp command we were overwriting the latest one with the older version and here by doing a poor checkout we were overwritten so now you have the log and you have the version what the testing people here expecting the changes on top of that you can do the modification and then you can send it back to them but only thing is whatever the changes we have done as part of the requirement too again we have to work on that and we will decide based on the like uh, priority uh, what kind of the decision has to be taken let's say for uh, whichever the changes are smaller and will take less time on top of that we will do that modification let's say whatever the code fix you have given just it's a one line fix then now whatever the process you have followed on the same process you will follow and create one version and then send it the code back to them so again you will be overwriting the latest version that is fifth version of the requirement two with the code changes whatever you have done because if the code changes for the requirement two is a big changes then i cannot make all those changes right and i will make sure that again for the requirement two this fix should be done so again whatever the steps i have followed with force option same steps i will follow for the requirement two also so that again i will make sure that my code is reverted back with the latest changes so far i have it without implementing the defect and on top of the requirement too i will apply again a one line fix for this defect so we have to identify which one is the less changes got it is it clear bangarish and ravi the process whatever we are following yeah we get so now the latest version is overridden right pardon latest version is overridden yeah yeah in sandbox level but in uh, emu we have the latest version for uh, all states again we will check in right we will check in and then we will create a tag so in the emu also the latest version uh, whatever it has for the requirement to will be overwritten and a new version will be created in the emu all the versions will be there so then how we can get the latest i mean uh, new version uh version 5 the same thing however you have done the same way again you can check okay. for requirement 2 okay but for this defect you have written just one line of the code but for requirement 2 you have done lot many changes so yeah. so for version 5 is the latest right now you have implemented yeah. effect for this defect one line of the code you have written so and you have checked in version 6 is yeah. there in the eme right on top of this version 6 again yeah. you cannot implement requirement 2 right it may take one week time for whatever you have done for requirement 2 so implementing one line fix is yeah. easy or implementing the requirement 2 completely on top of 6th version is easy implementing one line code is easy but 
testing people will be hurry up so we wanted to uh, send the code to them so we have implemented on top of the requirement one of this fix and send it back to them with the uh, fix then we will work on that again the same steps whatever we have taken the force checkout and locking thing on the latest version so now on sixth version you will lock it and check out the fifth version of with the force option so now again one line code has been overwritten with the requirement to latest changes right so now on this requirement yeah. two that is fifth version again you will be applying one line code and check in so that a seventh version will get appeared so this contains both the requirement two as well as the fix for the defect right yeah okay so like this we follow it depends on the changes what we are supposed to do whichever is the less changes let's say defect has much changes than the new requirement then in such a case i will uh, uh, apply the re new requirements on top of the defect okay and uh, how to create tag when it for each question yeah, yeah, we will discuss that i have not yet discussed we will discuss that that is the next concept so is this clear bagiro okay. janavli yeah Yes, you know, clear? Um, yeah. Okay. And how to apply a lock on the object? So we do have a commands like a locking commands like a lock switch break. And a lock release, a lock show, or the four commands we have it. So to apply a lock on the object, we have to write a command called a lock set command, and. Here we can apply a lock on the object as well as on the project. So if you are applying a lock on the object, then hyphen object and object name has to be given. If you are applying on a project or else on a project, then hyphen project and project name. So this is we have to be very cautious. You should not be applying a lock on the complete project. It will apply the lock on all the objects, whatever we have in this project. So be careful. This should not be executed. Most probably. So and whenever you apply the lock on any of the object, by default, whenever you do a check in, it will automatically release the lock. And by default the object is also a breakable so we have like the object is hyphen auto release or manual release by default is an auto release if you wanted to release a manually then while applying the lock itself you set it as hyphen manual release So by setting this option, after you check in also the object into the EME, still the lock will be persistent on this object. You have to manually release the lock. We have the command for that also. We will discuss it. And by default, like let's say you have applied a lock on one of the object, I can break that lock. Means by default it's a breakable object, but we never should be done that. So. Let's say you have applied a lock and you have worked for that object from last to 10 days. So without cons contacting you, I should not break the lock. And we can easily identify which is the person who has break this object. So before breaking the lock, we have to contact the person and we have to make sure that either he check in the code to the EME or he releases the lock. And let's say sometimes the, they will be in the vacation or not in the office and we have to urgency work on that. So in such a case and he does not require to check in or re check in the graph, then we can break the graph. But confirmation should be there definitely without confirmation directly don't execute the command to break the lock that will cause definitely. 
and by default it's a breakable object if you want let's say you're working on one of the most priority uh, incident and you have to buy yourself make sure that no one should break this object then in such a case you can set hyphen unbreakable so that any developer cannot be break this object only you or else administrator can have the privileges to break it you can release the lock or you can administrator can break the lock but none of the developers having the same roles cannot be break so this is a command we have it for setting a lock and you want to break a lock others object in such a case uh, when get one thing yeah yeah uh, when get we are given only object name right here yes sir we are not giving any path uh, no object name in the sense the path of the object that's what okay yes the path of the object name here not just the graph name the project path of the object it should be oh. so if i give slash mp then complete whatever the graphs are there in the mp path no across mp graphs right no not just starting with a slash mp it should be starting with the project no 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 yeah i will give full path up to slash mp okay then uh, whatever the graphs are there in the temp folder it will lock all those two graphs right uh again same question you were asking me the previous one which you was like star right star dot mp like that yeah yes 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 mm. i will check it and uh, come back to you i have not checked this yeah i don't think so it, it may be apply the lock but i will check it and confirm you okay okay so here object name in the sense complete path slash object name yes yes yeah okay and if you wanted to break the lock a lock break is the option we have it so breaking the lock for any of the objects could be done or the project could be done or any of the users let's say i want to break the lock all the objects which the bugger has been applied then i can give hyphen user username whatever the bugger user id has there that can be given but breaking definitely we should and when we will go for hyphen user username is most of the times once let's say the user has been worked in our project and he is no uh, like he has a uh, uh when to uh, he has like a uh, he is not working with us now in our company so and there are still locks on that user then we will go for hyphen user username and sometimes most of the cases we go for hyphen object object name and we can execute even for hyphen project project name also but this is so careful because whoever any user which have been op applied the lock or the project level all the locks will be broken then definitely no excuses on this so whenever you are using hyphen project so be careful what command you are executing and whatever the lock you have applied on the object let's say just as part of the testing purpose for one of the uh, uh, incident you are doing uh, you have applied the lock and you have made some changes and then you feel that uh, the code so far whatever you have written is correct and you are not required to check in so you have to release the lock then a lock release so the releasing of the object is whatever the objects we have logged we are going to release that locks then in such a case whether it could be object level i can object object name will be there or else project project name another command is we wanted to see what all the objects we have logged it or any of the person who has logged then a log show hyphen user username as happen object level we can see 
object name or else hyphen project also we can see so these are all the four commands we have at the locking level to set a lock or the object and to break the lock to release whatever we have logged it and to see which all the objects have been locked is it clear Bagraj and Ravi, is it clear? Yeah, man. You Ravi, is it clear? Are any doubts you have it? On locking? No, man, get. I'm good. Okay. Okay, then we will discuss the tag. So, how can I create a tag? So, and we will be creating a tag for each of the project. I cannot include uh, object one from project one and object two from project two into one of the tag. That cannot be done. So, what all the objects that are there in one of the project? All those objects has to be created. They have one tag per specific to one of the project. So, for each project, one tag can be created. We can create a number of tags, but what I am to say is objects related to that project should be a created a tag. So just maintain a file, any kind of the file with any of the extension, whatever the uh, objects has to be created a tag specific to one of the project. So once you maintain that file with all, all the objects list, then you execute a command called a tag create. A tag create hyphen exact the tag name and hyphen file what is a file you have created and with the list of the objects and give the file name so this command will create a tag whatever the name we have given and with the list of the objects whatever you have given in the file name specific to the project so and the tag name most of the times we follow the naming conventions will be like project name underscore version of the tag first time it will start with 01 then you keep incrementing the versions or sometimes even people will follow with the date and the, and the version on when we have created the tag so it depends on the project how they want it to so and once you created the tag let's say like you have given the name wrong then in such a case uh, do you want to create a tag once again then no you just have to rename the tag that can also be done a tag rename the old tag name and new tag name and let's say like you wanted to create a tag with the 10 objects but by mistake you have added one more object which is not supposed to go so in such a case again do you delete the tag and then recreate it still no we can remove the object from the tag so age tag remove and what is the tag name and what is the object name you have to remove so whenever you wanted to delete one of the object from the tag you have to use remove and if you are using like a delete then the tag itself will get deleted to delete the tag a tag delete and the tag name so the tag completely whatever you have created will get deleted so all these commands are like whenever you are doing still the migration still the scope is on the development perspective only developer perspective so once you given or uh, once you get the permission to migrate the stack from development environment to the testing environment you should not do any of the changes like adding an object into the tag deleting an object 
and you should not do any of uh, deleting a tag because we are not sure that the release team whenever uh, when they do the deployment so sometimes where if you are doing the modifications on this tag and they kicked off their jobs to migrate the code from the development environment to the other environment and in such a case errors will come so that will be again a serious issue so what you have to do is once everything is done and once we get an approval so we will be doing a tag freeze so once you do this freeze of the tag name then no additions no deletions and the tag will not be touch anything the tag will be present so once the tag has been migrated to the other environments let's say uh, again you wanted to view the contents whatever it has and today we have created the tag so i will be knowing that what contents it has in the tag so if you ask me after one week what all the objects you have sent it as part of this tag definitely i i cannot answer without viewing the contents in the file and i wanted to see who has created the tag in such a case a tag ls hyphen l and the tag name gives you the options like who has created the tag when it has been created and to list and to see what object it has in the tag a tag ls hyphen e and the tag name so if it has many objects in this then you can use the unix commands h minus the number how many you want it to list out so this command will list what all the objects it has been sent with this tag is it clear the tag commands yeah yeah and when get uh, tag name means what we can put usually now uh, project name underscore the version okay. of this tag sometimes even people will follow mm. with the date also today you are creating the tag the project name underscore today's date underscore version number you have created the tag today and i am also supposed to create with the objects whatever i have okay. modified belongs to the same tag two different defects are there you are working on one of the defect and i am working on one of the defect then in such a case two tags has to be created then a project name underscore the date will be uh, will not give the distinct tag name so definitely we have to go with versions whoever creates the okay. you, you can start with 01 i will be going with 02 like this okay and the file name is empty file or what to give file name also will changes Well, see, you are the one of the QC which uh, defect you are working. So you are sending the five five objects, and the other defect which I am working, I may be sending only two objects. So in such a case, we have to create two files. Okay. The file name could be like uh, you can use the defect one. Okay. So that it will. So, I mean, uh, tag. We, we are not writing anything in the right file name. File instead file. Pardon? No, we are not. I mean, writing anything inside file, right? No, we have to. The file contains. Uh, what? So this file name contains the objects list. Whatever you are supposed to create a tag. Whatever the objects you have placed in this file name, only with those objects the tag will get created. Okay. Okay. This is the uh, important prominent role. The file it is playing. On this information. Okay. Objects full path name, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Project path name. everywhere the mm, we have to give project path because all okay. this air commands works on the repository okay okay yeah okay And then we have m commands so you want to copy one of the multi file so every time whenever you look at the multi file definitely there will be a control file and many of the partitions so if i just do cp the control file uh, the old control file and the new control file name then i will know i will be copying only the control file without the data so whatever the data it has in the partitions the completely and it take a backup of the another multi file 
then we have to use m commands similarly as we do use cp file name old file name or the new file name similarly you will be using m underscore cp in case of multi files so by doing this m underscore cp the complete multi file will be taken a backup and i hope uh, we already discussed this m underscore mkfs right which creates a multi file system and as well as m underscore touch the first time whenever we we have discussed this partition commands i think we discussed m underscore mkfs and m underscore touch command right yeah okay and if you wanted to remove the multi files m underscore or m and the file name and you have every person will be having the unix access and the password will be there so you have to encrypt the password in such a case m underscore password is there and with hyphen prompt so that it will ask you the password and it will ask you like uh, what is the existing password and the new password you are going to set then it will give you the encrypted password for the new password so this password you can use in the configuration files and from the back end how can you check the version of the cooperating system this also sometimes in the interviews they will ask so m underscore env environment hyphen v is the option you have to give it so that it gives you the cooperating system version number then we have like you wanted to find out the host mission names and the data partition paths using the command line then we have like m underscore expand and how many uh, what is the mfs file system number then you can identify like hyphen m underscore expand hyphen host and the control file path In place of the host, you can give it like hyphen n. It gives the number of partitions. Hyphen pods. It gives the data partition pods. So using the backend command, we can easily identify. Another important command is m underscore dump. So. let's say you have a record format and you have that file also so you have to test that the file is sync with the dml or not then in such a case m underscore jump the dml file and the data file will be given so it gives like what is the value for this field uh, let's say record one like that. we have department number name and the location or the three fields in the dml we have it and the data file let's say department number 10 20 30 40 we have four records we have it so whenever you do m dump dml under the dat file it gives department number 10 department number xyz and location abc for one record and second record record to department number 20 and department name and location and record 3 30 department name and location and record for like this it will give the m dump command so why do we uh, it's useful so let's say whenever you're running the graph the graph has failed saying like uh, the incomplete structure or the um, bad record and it has given at the record number let's say you're running with uh, 1 lakh or 2 lakh records it has said that 70000 record has a failure so 
it is very difficult to look at the file of the 70,000 record or whatever the record number it has said. And I wanted to just look at the records from 69,999 to 70,001. Two, three records I need to look at. Then I can give hyphen start the start number and hyphen end and the end number. So which all the records you wanted to look at? Oh, I want to look the corresponding exact record. Then in such a case, you give it hyphen record record number. Instead of giving hyphen start and end, you can give hyphen record record number. And if it is a multi file, it has given which partition, which record it has failed. Then you can give in hyphen record record number along with hyphen partition and if you a partition number uh, which partition it says along with the hyphen record record number so this is uh, most of the times we will be using this mdom combine and we have seen like a DBC file, how to create that and what all the contents it will be there. So you have to test that the DBC file is working or not. So we have a command like m underscore db test DBC file. So this will give you the results whether the DBC file is working or not. And from the back end you have to generate the DML from the table or from the select then also you can execute the command m underscore then gen dml means generate the dml for this and the dbc file you give it to it will say which database and which host it has to connect through which user id and you give hyphen table table name so that the DML will get generated. If you wanted to write a select, I can select and select statement. So most of the times we will be generating the DMLs for either select or the table names. And let's say one of the job is running from the long time. <coughs> uh, you have to kill that so using m underscore kill command you can do that m underscore kill and what is the job name the graph name will be the job name the graph name dot recovery file you need to kill that not mp you are going to kill dot rec means a recovery file whenever you run the graph a recovery file will get created you have to kill this recovery file so whatever the graph that is running will get stopped but still the recovery file will be present so do you remember we discussed like once the graph has been failed if you wanted to run the graph from the beginning from the back end with the recovery file if when there is a recovery file Definitely it will start from the point of the failure if you wanted to run the graph from the beginning the recovery file to be deleted Then in such a case to delete this recovery file you have to use m underscore rollback hyphen g and the recovery file And we have like evaluation command m underscore eval as well so a simple expressions can also be evaluated like just i need to execute what is the value of this two plus three you can write like this m underscore eval or oh, i need to find out m underscore eval of i know there is a function called today and that will give even with the timestamp but I I'm not going to expect with the timestamp so I need only the date time 
so you want the date then in such a case I need to type cache date what is the format I am looking for let's say I am looking for ddmm yyyy so this is the format I am going to expect that's what you said and the function you are going to set is now so the, it will give even with the timestamp but before executing the eval command it will convert whatever format we are expecting it so this will give like gd14 and mm09 and here is 2015 that is what you will be getting it so these are all the m commands we have it so is it clean is it clear all the m commands whatever we discussed yeah you ravali is it clear yeah venkat oh. yep okay so we will stop it here for today so we are ahead with uh, like two concepts we have it so i cannot complete it in uh, another 10 minutes so we have pending like pdl and the p set so that tomorrow we will discuss it okay is it fine okay yeah. do you have any doubt before closing the today's session uh, no i no, no, okay then uh, venkat do you have few more eight commands like uh, eight sandbox eight sandbox create and we don't create the sandbox like uh, that uh, commands we don't execute it most of the times we go for uh, from the gd itself because whenever we okay. do a checkout the sandbox itself will, uh, will get created hmm. okay. the project structure we don't create it that administrators will take care and whatever the mfs file system we have shown here that also we never create that mfs file system okay okay and anything else okay. Okay, then we will close the session for today and tomorrow the same time we will see for PDL and the PSET information. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.